Hello friends, today in this video, I am going to discuss about the extraction and purification of RNA. Okay, and this extraction process is also called the acid guanidium thiocyanate phenolchloroform extraction. That is the triazol extraction and it is called triazol because here are tri reagent, that is three reagents are used. That is the guanidium thiocyanate, phenol and chloroform and acidic pH, acidic pH is required for this process for this extraction process okay so now at first to collect all the all three types of rna that is the mrna trna and rrna to collect this all three types of rna at first we have to lyse the cell so the first step is cell lysis okay so here all our cultured cells are present and now we have to lyse these cells okay so this is done by GTC buffer that is the guanidium thiocyanate buffer and this buffer contain all four these components that is the guanidium thiocyanate, sodium citrate, sarcosyl and beta mercaptoethanol and here guanidium thiocyanate is the most important for this extraction or extraction purification of RNA okay remember that this is the most important for this RNA extraction okay so here guanidium thiocyanate have two function that is it cause lysis that it cause cell lysis and the second is it inhibit the RNA's activity so that RNA cannot disrupt or cleave the RNA molecules and we get the intact or native RNA molecules okay so here the question is how guanidium thiocyanate lyse the cell and inhibit the RNA's activity so here Guanidium thiocyanate act as a chaotrophic agent which disrupt the hydrogen bonding and as all proteins require hydrogen bonds for their native structure so as guanidium thiocyanate disrupted this hydrogen bonding so they are disrupted or they lose their uh, native structure so all membrane proteins and also the RNAs which is also a protein they all are disrupted by guanidium thiocyanate because they disrupt the hydrogen bonds between them okay and also guanidium thiocyanate can disrupt the hydrophobic interaction and as the cell membrane that is the lipid bilayer depends the lipid and the structure of lipid bilayer is depends on the hydrophobic interaction between the lipid molecules or like fatty acid chains so as guanidium thiocyanate disrupt this hydrophobic interaction so the lipid membrane the bilayer membrane is also disrupted so as a result the cell is lysed okay so now here so so remember that this guanidium thiocyanate is important for the RNA extraction okay so now the second is sarcosyl Sarcosyl is a substitute detergent. It's a, it's a detergent which, which used as a substitute denaturing agent which disrupt the protein molecules. Okay. And here beta mercaptoethanol disrupt the disulfide bonds present on the protein. Okay. So now after using this GTC buffer that is the guanidium thiocyanate buffer, we get all lysed cell and all com cell components, intracellular cell components come into the solution. In the buffer okay so now so now we have to maintain the pH at acidic range and this acidic range is most important for the separation of RNA molecule from the DNA and protein molecule in the phenol chloroform extraction so to separate RNA molecules we have to maintain the pH at acidic range and this is done by adding sodium acetate buffer whose pH is around 4 okay so now after adding we get all cell components present at acidic pH and then we have to perform phenol chloroform extraction by using this acidic pH which is required to separate the RNA molecules from the DNA and protein molecules okay now in phenol chloroform extraction at first the intracellular components containing the DNA RNA and protein which are present in acidic pH but added to the phenol chloroform mixture that is present in 1 is to 1 ratio or we can add it, these intracellular components to the phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol 
mixture that is present in 25 is to 24 is to 1 ratio okay so now after adding these intracellular components to the ferro chloroform mixture then we have to centrifuge this mixture and then we get two layers which are separated from each other the upper layer is called the aqueous layer where the rna is present and the lower portion is the organic phenol layer where the dna is present and protein present in the interface okay and now the question is why this separation is occurred the separation is occurred because of two reasons the first is aqueous layer is polar and organic phenol phenol is non-polar molecule and the second reason is phenol is more denser that means the phenol's density is more than the aqueous layer and that's why they are separated from each other okay so now the question second question is why rna is present in the aqueous layer and why the dna is present in the organic phenol layer the answer is dna is negatively charged because of it of its phosphate group and here dna so dna has uh, attraction towards the aqueous phase because it is negatively charged but here we use acidic ph and this in this acidic ph hydrogen ion concentration is higher that means h plus ion concentration is higher so this positively charged hydrogen ion neutralize the negatively charged dna molecule and that's why dna dna's hydrophobicity is increased and this and that's why dna solubilized or dissolved in the organic phenol layer okay but rna but rna do not dissolve in the organic layer because rna is more acidic than dna because because rna has extra oh group in the two prime position of the pentose sugar of every nucleotide okay and that's why it is more acidic than the dna that means it is more polar and that's why it present in the aqueous layer but the dna present in the organic phenol layer because the h plus ion neutralize the negatively charged dna phosphate negatively charged dna molecule okay so that's why they are separated from each other and protein present in the interface because protein has protein have both non-polar and polar amino acid that means they both have hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids and in organic phenol layer organic in presence of uh, hydrophobic involvement protein change or flip their hydrophobic residue towards the outside towards the phenol layer and that's why they change their structure flip their structure and present in the upper portion of the organic phenol layer okay so now so now if we use so now why we use acidic ph why not neutral ph in neutral ph that is the ph7 at ph7 the dna and rna both are negatively charged and they both have attraction towards the aqueous phase towards the polar region and that's why both dna and rna present in the aqueous phase in neutral ph so that's why in neutral ph we do not separate them separate dna and rna from each other and that's why we use acidic ph okay so now another question is why we do not use only phenol for this separation why we use phenol chloroform mixture or phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol mixture the answer the first thing is that phenol is more denser than aqueous layer and it is non-polar so they are separated like this but the reason is that but phenol is somewhat little bit dissolved in the aqueous layer and that's why they produce a non-clear separation between aqueous layer and organic layer so that's why we have to add chloroform mixture chloroform mixture mixing with the phenol so that chloroform is more denser than aqueous layer and also phenol and that's why it mix that's why and it also and it and chloroform also mix with the phenol more tightly and that's why chloroform 
make the solution more clear makes the separation more clear and we get the two layer that is the aqueous layer and the organic layer more clearly that's that is the use of chloroform okay and here isomel alcohol uh, isomel alcohol reduces the foaming okay so now after separating this aqueous layer and organic layer we have to collect this aqueous layer containing the rna and have to perform isomel alcohol sorry isopropanol precipitation okay now in isopropanol precipitation at first the aqueous layer containing the rna is collected and then added to the isopropanol containing some salt okay so after that we have to centrifuge this mixture and then we get the precipitation of rna containing some salt and this precipitation is done by salting out mechanism that means the rna which is negatively charged is covered or shielded by the positively charged salt molecules okay and that's why the solubility of the rna is reduced and they get precipitated okay with the, with some salt contamination so now we have to remove this salt and that's why we have to add ethanol at first we have to remove this isopropanol then we have to add 70% ethanol to the rna molecule and here the salt molecule soluble or dissolved in the ethanol come into the ethanol because salt is more soluble in ethanol than isopropanol and that's why salt present in the rna molecule come into the ethanol okay and now we have to evaporate this ethanol so that we get only the rna molecule present here and now we have to store this rna by adding some buffer okay so in this way we can extract and purify the rna molecules okay thank you for watching this video